Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to learn about chemical formulas. So what are chemical formulas and how do they work? Well it says right here that a chemical formula is a way of expressing information about the proportion of atoms that constitute a particular chemical compound using a single line of chemical element symbols, num numbers, and sometimes uh, other symbols as well, parentheses, dashes, or even brackets. All right, so basically a chemical formula tells you uh, how many of each atom there are in a given compound, essentially. Okay, so if we take a look at some examples here, here's our chemical formula of water. There are two hydrogens and one oxygen, and together that makes up our, uh, our chemical compound we know as water. If we take a look right here, here is our chemical formula for glucose. It's six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. C6H12O6 is the chemical formula for glucose. If we take a look at ammonium sulfide NH42S right that may, it's made up of two nitrogens eight hydrogens and one sulfur okay if we take a look at magnesium nitrate for example magnesium nitrate is made up of one magnesium atom two nitrogen atoms and six oxygen atoms and last but not least if we take a look at ethanol or ethyl alcohol it's made up of two carbons six hydrogens and one oxygen atom okay so a chemical formula basically tells us the proportions or the number of each atom there are in a given compound or molecule. And if we take a look at our example here with methane or CH4, we can see that these little subscripts here that follow the chemical symbols, these here tell us the number of atoms there are of that particular element in a given compound or molecule. For example, right here, this subscript of four means that there's four hydrogens, and we don't see a one here, and anytime we don't see a subscript, it's understood to be one, just like a coefficient in algebra, right? If we have x or the variable x, it's understood that there is a one in front of it. So if we don't see a subscript following a chemical symbol, it's understood to be a one. So if we take a look at a methane molecule, it's made up of four hydrogens and one carbon atom. Okay, so let's take a look at a few examples and, and determine how many of each atom there are in uh, a given compound. All right, so when we're writing chemical formulas, you might want to know or wonder, hey, which element comes first when we're writing a chemical formula? Well, it says right here that typically, and in fact in most cases, when we're writing chemical formulas, the element or atom that has the least electronegativity value typically comes first when we're writing the chemical formulas. Okay, so make sure you're using a periodic table of elements that shows you the electronegativity values of the different elements, and the ones that have the least electro or that are the least electronegative are typically the elements that get listed first in a chemical formula. For example, if we look at NB2O3, NB is going to be less electronegative than oxygen, so it gets listed first, okay? And so if we want to determine how many of each atom there are in the following compounds, we can see uh, right here that there's going to be two NBs and there's going to be three oxygens that make up this compound right here, NB2O3. If we take a look right here at this one, this is a long one here, right? And so if we take a look, there's going to be one barium. It looks like there's going to be, oh, it, anytime we have uh, uh, atoms that are in parentheses, it works similar to math, okay? So if we take a look outside the parentheses, there's going to be this subscript of two. And what this subscript of two outside the parentheses means, it means to multiply uh, each subscript inside the parentheses by two. So if we take a look, there's going to be two bromines. We have two times three is six oxygens. And if we have a coefficient here, this two also means to multiply by each of the subscripts that are following the compound, or I'm sorry, that are following the coefficient after. So two times two is four hydrogens. And then we have two oxygens here. So we have two oxygens here and six here. That makes eight oxygens total. And if we take a look, we've got four hydrogens. Okay, so there we go. That's how many of each atom there are in this compound. If we take a look right here, it looks like we're going to have one zinc atom. It looks like we're going to have 2 times 8 is 16 carbons. It looks like we're going to have 30 hydrogens. And it looks like we're going to have 4 oxygens, right? 4 oxygens here. Okay, so there we go. If we take a look at this compound right here, it looks like we're going to have 1 manganese. We're going to have 8 leads 
2 times 3 is 6 silicons, and we're going to have 21 oxygens going on right here in this compound. If we take a look right here, there's one barium, there's two potassium atoms, there are two chromium atoms, and there are eight oxygen atoms right here. If we take a look at this compound, there's one lithium atom, there's going to be one aluminum atom, there's going to be uh, two silicons, and there's going to be six oxygens right here in this compound. If we take a look at this one right here, actually it looks like this one right here is a, is a repeat of this one right here, so we'll go ahead and skip that one. If we take a look right here, we have one barium, we have one TE, we have four oxygens here, plus the three here, which makes seven oxygens. We have seven oxygens total, and we're going to have six hydrogens in this little compound. If we take a look right here, it looks like we're going to have two nitrogens. We're going to have eight hydrogens. We're going to have one carbon, and we're going to have three oxygens that make up this compound right here, ammonium carbonate. All right, so that's how you determine how many atoms there are in each uh, in, of each or how many atoms there are in each compound. Okay, let's talk, uh, or let's take a look at some examples where you can try on your own now. All right, so what I would do now is pause the video at this moment. And so we have right here all the chemical formulas for these different compounds. And so what I would do is I would pause the video at this moment and determine the number of each atom there are in each one of these little compounds. So for this first example here, figure out how many nickel atoms there are, how many bromines, how many hydrogens, and how many oxygens there are. And go ahead and pause it for a few moments while you try to work these through. And then I'll give you the answers here in a, in a minute here or in a second here. All right, so how did you do? Here are the answers to all of the, uh, the little uh, chemical formulas here. Uh, for example, nickel has one, I'm sorry, this, this compound right here has one nickel, two bromines, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. So take a look how you did. And if you got all these right, then you probably... Uh, know how to determine how many atoms there are in a given chemical formula or a given chemical compound or molecule. So if you like what you see, go ahead and click the little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments in the comment section down below. And I hope you guys found this helpful.